the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. All right, folks, hot off the presses, we've got the trailer for Halloween Ends coming this October, 2022, the year of our Lord. The finale to the David Gordon Green trilogy of Halloween sequels. Let's go, (laughs) and I have a lot to talk about. (laughs) Let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer and get into it. All right, well, there you have it. Halloween ends. Mm. Coming out in October. Mm. The saga. To, yeah. The saga of Michael Myers and Laurie Strode comes to a spine-chilling climax in this <laughs> final installment of the franchise. Thank God it's ending, uh, I guess. Yes. I mean, so yeah. I watched this trailer, and literally the first thing I said to Dan, what the fuck did I watch? Yeah. Would my first question, from just from the trailer... Would Michael Myers intentionally try to stick his victim's hand in the garbage disposal? Or is this a cheap scare tactic? I'm genuinely curious. The latter, probably. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The last movie had some problems. Yeah, (laughs) to say the least. Okay, here's the thing. We've mentioned on the show quite a few times. I'm a... Huge Halloween fan. It's my favorite movie of all time. The original 1978 John Carpenter classic. And as did a lot of horror movies of the era, a lot of famous horror movies, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween. They've all suffered from the famous horror movie sequel issue where they're all just terrible. One being worse than the last. Halloween has a bit of a uh, unique history in that the original concept for the film at the end, Michael Myers disappears. And there's a very short montage of the places we've seen him and you hear his ominous breathing in the mask and the movie's over. And this instills a feeling in the audience that is only available because that mystery is lingering of what the fuck, where is he? And John Carpenter in interviews has always likened Michael Myers to a force of nature. He has no backstory, as we've mentioned when we talked about Jaws, we've talked about this with the Joker, a bunch of other characters. He has no backstory. He has no motivation. He has no drive. He has no reason for doing the things that he's doing. He just does them. And like a force of nature, like a hurricane blowing through town. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It just happens. And that's kind of what his vision was for Michael Myers in the original Halloween film. Well, Halloween went on to become the highest grossing independent film of all time at the time. And therefore, the producers wanted a sequel. Of course. They reached out to John Carpenter and he agreed to write the script for it but i don't he didn't want to direct it and in the script he had to come up with a new plot because in the original one it's just a fucking dude in a mask chasing babysitters for no reason well now you have to come up with a, a, a interesting plot and he came up with the plot point that michael myers is the brother of our main character laurie strode played by jamie lee curtis and that Jamie was a baby when Michael killed his sister all those years ago. And they put her up for adoption. And he was actually, the reason he came back was for vengeance, to finish his job, killing his sisters. And Halloween 2 is a little bit like, it's, 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 fans aren't like all the way on board. There's some fans that love it. Some fans hate it. Um, I think it's a good movie. It's just not like, I don't consider, I mentioned this, I, I, and one of the previous episodes we talked about, I said, I don't consider 
any of the Halloween's canon except for the first one. Um, and after Halloween 2, that was it. They killed Michael Myers. They went on to make Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Has nothing to do with Michael Myers. John Carpenter decided to make a whole new story set on Halloween, which was the original premise. This was supposed to be a series of movies that take place on Halloween that have different stories. Mm. Michael Myers just being one of them. Right. Halloween 3 got, like, absolutely destroyed by fans and critics, and everybody wanted Michael Myers back. It's only... It was only in, like, years later that Halloween 3 went on to be, like, a cult classic, but everybody wanted Michael Myers back. John Carpenter sold his rights to the premise, to the character, and, of course, the studio brought Michael Myers back with Halloween 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, <laughs> and all those movies are horrendous. Then your boy David Gordon Green comes along a couple years ago with Danny McBride. Danny McBride, fucking hilarious writer. David Gordon Green's a great director. Them two together have done some fucking great things. Um, namely, I, now, when I first heard about this as a fan of Halloween, I was like, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride are going to do a fucking Halloween sequel? What? These guys are, like, mostly comedy guys. Mm -hmm. Well... Around the same time, I had just gotten finished watching their show, Vice Principles, that was on HBO. Hilarious show that takes a very, very dark turn. And I was like, okay, well, I think they could pull the horror thing off. And the marketing for the 2018 Halloween was David Gordon Green and Danny McBride being like, oh, we're massive fans of the original Halloween. Those sequels were trash like we want to make the true sequel to john carpenter's vision we want to continue we were going to pretend all these sequels including halloween 2 don't exist this is the true sequel to john carpenter's halloween well i have learned my lesson anytime <laughs> somebody comes in and says we're huge fans of something they're gonna fuck it up <laughs> halloween 2018 wasn't a bad movie it's not even a bad Halloween movie, but the sequel to John Carpenter's vision, it isn't. And the reason being is because John Carpenter's vision was that Michael Myers is gone. We don't know where he went. Okay. That right there, you bring him back. You have to explain away him disappearing. You have to explain away why he's back. Why did he survive the fucking shotgun blast in Halloween 4? Why did he survive getting fucking blown up in 2? Why did he survive? Like, you have to, once you have to explain these things, it's, it's, the, that's it. The plot is lost. Yeah. Um, and Halloween 2018 does that by, oh yeah, he just scurried off and got arrested. Like, what? You've now effectively removed all the horror of this character, for me, at least. Um, and Halloween 2018 is basically what you would expect. He's going around fucking Haddonfield hacking people up. Um, until he has his little showdown with Laurie Strode, who's waited all these years knowing that he was going to come back eventually. And she's trained, she's prepared. And this movie is really actually a story about PTSD. Laurie has PTSD, as one would, from experiencing a night like she did in 1978. Her friends getting butchered, her almost getting butchered. Um, that, to me, is a very interesting p premise. Um, like, like Sydney in the Scream movies. Yeah. Halloween Kills was the sequel follow-up to that. It takes place immediately after. I don't know if it was a fucking COVID issue, you know, with filming and stuff like that, but that movie goes from one thing to a whole nother thing, which I want to review these movies later on when Halloween, the month of October rolls around and the holiday comes around. So I will touch on it briefly here, but that movie's about, like, mob mentality. And it's almost as if da uh, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride, like, stopped what they were doing. And, like, we have to change this script to, like, coincide with what's going on in, like, our culture as Americans. And, like, the mm -hmm. political culture. And it's, like, anti-mob mentality. Like, mobs are bad. There's this whole weird, disjointed, awful fucking section of the movie where there's like a fucking mob in a hospital and it did you watch it marvin i feel like i remember you saying you did no i, I didn't i um i'm behind on the recent halloween okay. movies so i got some catching up to do 
Okay. Dan and I watched this one together and it was <clears throat> it was rough. Yeah. Mind you, at the end of Halloween 2018, Michael Myers gets trapped in Lori's basement and burnt alive. Nope. He got out because of some dumb fucking firefighter in Halloween Kills. And now he's back on the loose again on the same night doing the same thing. And now apparently he's back again. And Halloween Kills <laughs> left us off with like a bit of a cliffhanger. Yeah, this is one where they explain that like he's pure evil and you can't kill evil. Yeah, it's fucking well, he's a superhero now. Yeah. Essentially, what David Gordon Green and Danny McBride did was exactly the things that they were trying to reverse from the other sequels. It's stupid that Michael Myers can't die. It's stupid that this is the. What did what you is... just do? Yeah. You just did the same thing. Why? Because Halloween 2018 made a ton of money. Right. And Blumhouse wanted you to make sequels to it. So the movie that was supposed to be the true vision, the true sequel to John Carpenter's vision is just like the other sequels of the past. And to be honest with you, they're like not that great um, for lots of reasons. I think it's it shows Michael Myers not being Michael Myers that we know and love from the original. Most fans would agree. There's good moments in these movies and whatnot, but I mean, for the most part, they're pretty weak. Uh, this one here, this trailer looks like it's going to be more of the same. Supposedly wrapping up this night that he comes back. Um, as I met, I read, I read the description. There were rumors, and I think David Gordon Green himself said that this movie is going to be uh, have a lot to do with like COVID. Somehow, somehow there's going to be a pandemic that plays a role in this. I, he had said this after Halloween Kills came out, which. I don't know how you're going to fucking squeeze that into a Michael Myers movie. Um, well, he does wear a mask. He does wear a mask. Yeah. <laughs> that is a good point. Can't get droplets into the thing. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. I'm not excited about this movie, honestly. I'm going to watch it because I'm a Halloween fan, but right. begrudgingly. I just want to see how they butcher it even further. That's sad. You're, like, forced to watch this terrible fucking movie. Yeah, like, you know what? It's not that they're terrible. Like, uh, two is pretty bad, but there's reasons we'll <laughs> go into at a later date on that. But, you know, like, if the original Halloween never existed, had David Gordon Green never said, this is the true sequel to John Carpenter's vision, I would have nothing to say. Just like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, it's another right. Halloween movie. But what you've given me is clearly not the vision that this man had. Um, say what you will about the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. They're not good. But at least he tried to do something different, you know, while trying to stay true to the original. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. This trailer really, like, doesn't really show anything other than what you would expect. It's Laurie being like, come on, motherfucker, like, let's do this. Like, they're having their final showdown. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, what do you guys think? I, I just went on for fucking 12 minutes ranting. Oh, that was fine. Um, I don't, like I said, I haven't watched those uh, mm -hmm. recent films, so I don't have uh, much idea, but I can see why you're annoyed with them basically making him unkillable. That that just seems super whack. Have you seen the original fucking... Halloween, Marvin? Yes, not as an adult though. So, okay. but do you remember the ending? He gets shot off the balcony. Yeah. And yeah. Then Loomis looks over and is like, "Oh, he's gone." Yeah, yeah. You know, and there's an interesting in interviews. There's a interesting point where um, Donald Pleasance, the guy who played Doctor Loomis in that film, he said to John, and he was like the veteran actor on this set of kids who have barely been in movies before and he said to john carpenter at the time he's like when i look over the balcony there's two ways that i could play this i could do the surprise like oh shit he's fucking gone or the i knew this would happen mm. and he ended up going with the i knew this would happen and that speaks so much to right. that force of nature thing that john carpenter had. And saying force of nature, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's like paranormal or magical or power or any of this stuff. It's just that he just is. Right. <laughs> and that's just yeah. all there is to it. And now right. you, you add all these explanations to it. Now, hot take. 
I'm no writer. I'm not a director. I'm not a filmmaker. So I'm not in a position to sit here and shit on these people who are probably working hard to make these movies good for fans and stuff like that. So I know that. But if I were in charge, I think that the PTSD angle is really, really good. It's something that's never really been explored before in slasher films, and slasher films have a very long cinematic history um, right. as a genre or subgenre of horror movies in general. And no movie really ever goes in depth on what becomes of the final girl. Which Laurie Strode coined the term, the final girl. She's the final one, the final survivor. What would it be like for a survivor of such an event? Um, and 40 years living with this torment that this guy who fucking got shot off your balcony and is now missing. Imagine the fear that you would be living with that he might come back someday. I think that this Halloween 2018 film should have been a movie about Laurie Strode. That's it. Michael Myers isn't in it. If you want to show Michael Myers to appease fans, because, you know, there's people out there to be like, well, you can't have Halloween without Michael Myers. You could show him in flashbacks. You could show him in, like, nightmares that she's having. Yeah, it could be it could this be could, like, um, a psychological thriller. Yeah, like the looming threat. Kind of mm -hmm. like kind of like with Jaws, like the looming yeah. threat of the shark. <laughs> yeah. It could have been that, but you actually never see him. He's just... It could have been like the Joker movie, where, like, a lot of the shit that you see in the film is in his head. You know, you All could right. you could have crazy. done a very effective psychological thriller of this woman who is a survivor of a, a massacre 40 years ago, and she's been living with this torment her whole life. And I think that would have been a really great movie and a really great way to make a sequel that doesn't ruin John Carpenter's vision. Let's go. So the parts of Halloween 2018 that I really liked and that I thought were like super effective was seeing Laurie, Laurie's like family life and how her PTSD has really ruined her relationships with her daughter, her granddaughter, and you know, just the living in fear of this guy all these years has just ruined her life in so many different ways. And I think that would have been a really, uh, I really would have loved to see them super lean on that rather than bring back Michael Myers. And I understand why you do that. As I said earlier, you can't have a Halloween movie without Michael Myers. So people right. think. People come in expecting to see a Michael Myers slasher film when they think of Halloween. And if they don't get that, then right. they'll um, be upset. But now, here's the thing, right? They could fix all this if they wanted to with this third movie. I would be... Fine. I would be thrilled even if they completely course corrected and retconned these first two movies, Halloween and Halloween Kills. And in this one is they're like, hey, guess what? Everything that happened in those two movies didn't actually happen. It's all been in Lori's head. This is her PTSD. <laughs> this is her trauma doing this to her. She thinks like right. these are these are her nightmares. And then you make just a drama, make a psychological thriller drama and then end the series. That's it. I'd be I'd be a fan of that. I'd be cool with that. Um, but as it stands, which it's probably not going to be that, that's like, you know, that's not going to be the case, obviously. Right. So, uh, you know, I'll watch it. I'll take it with a grain of salt and then I'll go back to my existence where I watch the original Halloween like a few times a year and it's the only movie in the series to me. So <laughs> that's that. Mm -hmm. I think for October, we should name it now, Marvin, the make Marvin watch will be the original Halloween original since you said Halloween. you haven't seen it as an adult. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Mark it down, folks. And uh, uh yeah. I, I do want to do a lot of like horror movie content leading up to Halloween, so maybe we could plan some uh episodes. Let us know in the comments below, folks, what you think of Halloween kills the trailer. Uh what you want to see for this movie. Are you excited? Do you think it's stupid that Michael Myers is back? Um <laughs> And uh, let us know uh, what horror movies you want to see us review as we inch closer to uh, Horror Movie Fans Christmas, Halloween. Come and get me, motherfucker.
What's up, people? Dan here. Just to remind you that if you enjoyed the video, to please go ahead and hit the like button. It really helps us out, and uh, it lets us know that we're doing an okay job. If you want to be notified for more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, and if you're feeling extra spicy, hit that little bell button down below. Give it a little, give it a little tickle.